Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm founder of Syntonic Birth and I woke up this morning <clears throat> after several days of feeling really rough with cold and um, aches to the news item um, interview with Lord somebody um, promoting the benefits of smart meters once again and immediately I my my veins are coursing with adrenaline and and I'm feeling outrage again that nobody nobody in any any power is discussed nobody seems to be talking about the risks of smart meters and even six weeks ago I didn't even know what a smart meter was I'd never even heard of one um, and I can't remember how I came upon it but I stumbled upon this video interview of Dr. Klinghart and he is a doctor specializing he's a German doctor living in America and um, practicing between between the two countries um, but he has a practice in America um, basically he's like the last port of call for those stuff, suffering from chronic infections chronic illnesses where they've maybe gone to 20 other doctors and had no joy. And um, what he has noticed is an exponential rise in these chronic illnesses such as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, um, MS. Any, I mean, there's, there are so many. Basically, autoimmune diseases, cancer. Um, so many, so many of these illnesses have risen exponentially with the rise, the exponential rise in our, in our um, reliance on an obsession about wireless technology. And um, it was a really big wake up call. He talks really calmly about it. He's talking from experience. He notes that when he trained in um, at med school, medical school, this wasn't even, these illnesses weren't even on the, um, syllabus because they were so rare and and he has he explains that really the only the only single like environmental factor that um seems to be the the link is what is in our environment and um he refers to us uh, basically sleepwalking into the biggest health crisis of our age um, this had me sitting up, particularly with what I have been learning about um, the truth about cancer and the betrayal series on um, autoimmune disease. Everything started, I was getting lots of different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. And his video was specifically about the, um, the dangers of electromagnetic frequency radiation that is emitted from smart meters and other wireless technologies. That includes your Wi-Fi, it includes your your electrical devices, your laptop, your smartphone. Um, I mean, you can take it even to the lighting, the electricity in your home. But the the worst offenders are smart meters. Next up are cordless telephones, which we've all just embraced, haven't we? Um, and and after that, your your um your mobile um i've never heard of smart meters and maybe you haven't either so what is a smart meter a smart meter is a meter that a utility company um, currently wants to put on your house and in your water system to monitor um sp specific usage of your of your energy use so your gas and electricity and your water supply um, how it differs from from an analog smart uh, analog meter is that it is um, it is taking readings um, wirelessly. It is communicating wirelessly with two radars, as I understand it, that are going into um, taking readings in your home and connecting and communicating wirelessly with every single um, uh, smart device in your home and this is all down the routes and who stands to benefit the, the big tech and the big energy companies 
because sooner or later you won't be able to buy the old um, washing machines and so on. They're all fitted with smart technology. You don't have to call out an engineer. You can have your washing machine emitting electromagnetic frequency radiation to your mobile phone. And um, of course, there are huge benefits to uh, to them and huge efficiencies to be made. And no one is talking about the human cost of this. And so that is what I'm wanting to address here. Um, the smart meter is also communicating through pulsed, um, pulsed uh, radia radiation um, to every other smart meter in your neighbourhood that is on what is called the mesh network. Um, they will try to tell you that this is taking a meter reading two or three times a day. You can choose um, for it to be half hourly. I can't remember whether I've read whether that is actually the default or unless you specify not or whether it's like an hourly thing that um, you, you can request it to be half hourly. Um, what they don't tell you is that these, um, this pulsed radiation <clears throat> is emitting and can be measured if you have the right, the right gadget to, to read the, radia the radiation levels is emitting uh, up to 190,000 times or more a day over a 24-7, day and night. Now, first off, if you watch any video that is actually um, monitoring this, where you can actually hear it, and seeing is believing, isn't it? Um, you can start to get a really good idea of, one, the truth about how many times these things are actually emitting radiation um, and and to start start to get an impression of how invasive that actually can be to our bodies on the cellular level um, to the bodies of our children and our unborn children who are most susceptible to this um, basically because children and fetuses have a much thinner cranium um, their bodies and their brains are still developing um, and so these frequencies, these electromagnetic frequencies are invading them um, much more easily, they can penetrate much more deeply and uh, they have more fluid in their bodies and that is increasing the effects, <clears throat> the effects of these um, frequencies on their, on their bodies and their systems. Um, The reason this is so pervasive and why we all need to sit up and wake up and take action is because, as we know from Wi-Fi technology, you know, those of us who are waking up to the, to the harmful effects of, of wireless technology in our homes and actually are moving to turning off our, our Wi-Fi routers and plugging in with an Ethernet cable, Particularly if you live in a in a city, as I did, I was in London. I've moved to the country to try and get away from all of this, but um, uh, it, it's actually impossible. Um, but particularly if you live in a town or a block of flats, you know perfectly well that you're going to pick up on on umpteen other wireless Wi-Fi signals, and so it really does. It it, it feeds a sense of overwhelm, doesn't it? When you think, well, what's the point? You feel powerless. Okay, so I could kind of inconvenience myself. Not so much, actually, when you get your head around it, just a little. I could inconvenience myself by, by plugging in and um, getting rid of all these cordless things. Um, but what's the point? Because I'm going to pick up on 10 other signals all around me. Um, so we do need to... You can make a difference. You can. There are things that you can do to protect yourself if this is something that you're interested in, but I'm not going to touch on them here. Um, uh, we don't need to feel completely powerless. I totally and utterly understand and empathise with that feeling of overwhelm and the stress that comes with that when you start to wake up to this. Um, but it's about having a conversation. And I'm just doing my little bit here to start to open open the eyes of those who are up for having them opened to to understand what we're facing here and and what we can stand up 
to and say no and why, why that's so important. If I can make a ripple effect and other people can have those conversations, if other people can start to share that information, which is already happening, then as a community, we can come together and make a bigger difference. Um, if we can talk to the other people in our, in, in our block of flats, if we live in a flat, that can make a difference. Um, the really damaging thing about, about all of this wireless technology, both your router and the smart meters and the cordless telephones, are that they are emitting 24 seven. So unless you switch off, um, you are getting this pulsed radiation um, that is hugely detrimental to the electromagnetic field of your body, because we are electromagnetic beings functioning on frequencies, every single function of our body, every communication within it is an, is an electromagnetic um, chart, uh, what am I trying to say, it, it, signal. Um, the, the time when we are most susceptible is when we are sleeping, um, which is why this 24-7 pulsed, pulsed radiation is hugely, hugely damaging um, with the smart meters. Okay, so with your Wi-Fi, you can choose to turn that off. You can choose to protect your home with certain things that can prevent other people's Wi-Fi signals coming into your home. It's not so easy with, um, with a smart meter. Um, I am seeing ways that people are trying to protect themselves with this when they wise up to it, but better not to have them on your home, better not to have them in your street. So in London, smart, uh, Thames Water are the first, um, the first water company in the country, in the UK, who are currently trying to roll out smart water meters to every household. Um, I have yet to have actually get through to somebody to have a conversation to really understand the specifics, so I'm just going to touch on this briefly. But basically, um, it's one big experiment. You're putting um, electromagnetic um, frequencies into your water supply. In London, there are a lot of lead pipes still, and the oscillating factor of these electromagnetic frequencies um, uh, risks actually releasing some of those, some of that lead and other toxins into the water system. You then drink it, and the effect that we are bathing in all these electromagnetic frequencies means that on a cellular level, um, without getting in too technical, but on a cellular level, your your cellular function is being broken down by these wireless technologies in such a way that your cells are then um, more susceptible to allow toxins in through the um, cell membrane, which is actually the, the brain of the cell. Um, in some cases, the, the cell membrane can actually be, uh, can actually die. So effectively you're cutting off, your, your, your cells are then brain dead or dead. Um, and, and it's also allowing the DNA uh, of the of the cell to be um, well to be disrupted and to change, so there are massive consequences here um, on our health and well-being, with lasting generational effects on our children and and our children's children and generations to come. Um, it's been long documented. Uh, that, that microwave radiation, which is effectively what radio frequencies are, it's just that the, the telecom companies have fought very hard to actually um, not call them microwaves, because then we might not want to put our headphones to our heads at any intelligence. Um, they have fought to call them radio frequencies, because we think the radio is fine, don't we? Um, but effectively it's microwave radiation. And... Um, <clears throat> Where am I going with that? I've lost my thread a little bit. Uh, I've lost my thread, but um, suffice to say that this is having. Uh, yes, so so yeah, microwave radiation or radio frequencies have been used for decades since the Cold War as a means of um, of of warfare 
So I have watched interviews with a with a um, a microwave an RAF microwave radiation expert who is um, uh, frequently called upon to to speak the truth about this. It's it's silent. You can't hear it, smell it, taste it, see it, and the effects of it are not immediate. But one of the things it's known to, to cause is um, is uh, brain fog, convulsions, um, all sorts of of uh, effects that you might not automatically or instantly think might relate to one particular thing. Um, there's a build up, there's an accumulative effect. Um, and uh, yeah, it's hugely pervasive. And um, the reason that you're being told why smart meters and all this technology is safe is because the um, the official uh, safety levels uh, set by um, the the bodies that that the the companies themselves um, choose to regard. Are measuring only one kind of um, one kind of effect, and this is um, this is a, a thermal effect. So they are measuring um, the the heating effect of one kilogram. I don't know exactly what that refers to. I'm assuming that that might be like the volume of your body or something or your head. Um, but they are measuring the thermal effect, in other words, the heated radiation effect um, on uh, on you for six minutes. How long is your average telephone call on your mobile phone? I know that many of us could talk on it quite happily to our heads for way longer than six minutes, just on one phone call, never mind. Um, in a day or in a month. Um, the, I can't bring together everything and I want to keep this as brief as I can. Um, there's loads more that can be said on this but I can't regurgitate it all coherently, especially straight from my sick bed. Um, what is not measured or acknowledged by the powers that be are the non-thermal effects, or never mind any thermal effects beyond six minutes, 24 seven, in the case of your smart meter. They're not measuring the non-thermal effects and there are thousands and thousands of studies that um, go to show the harmful effects of the non-thermal um, effects of this. Uh, There are, the, the, this is touching on the health effects. Um, I may have to do a separate, a separate video for, for some more specific stuff. Um, there are also, the, there's also the issue of, um, of data protection. What these smart meters will enable the companies to do is extract information about your every move, every item that you use, every room that you're in, when you're in it, how long you're in it for, what you're using in it, what you're doing in it. Um, down the line, the smart technologies, if you embrace them and have the smart gadgets in your home, um, they, they may have your bank details for automatic purchases of things or payment of bills. Um, uh, whilst there may be a benefit to you being at the office and wanting to turn your heating on before you get home or your washing machine on or something like that that it might enable um, what this what this um, tech what this technology is allowing is for is for the external companies to to be able to monitor your every move um, the the wireless network on the smart meters bearing in mind this is a mesh network within your community um, are, are unsecured uh, wireless networks. Would you want your bank details available to anyone in your neighborhood? Would you want anyone in your neighborhood to know when you were out or away on holiday? 
would you want your anyone in your neighbourhood to know um, where your children were home and what room they were in? What rooms were empty, even if you were in your home? The, these wireless networks are very uh, susceptible to being hacked. And it is not just conspiracy theory to think that there is a massive risk in um, in, uh, in in hacking of this. This is you know there are um, people in the CIA who have flagged this up as a very real threat. And the cyber threat is the number one biggest threat we face now, apparently, um, in the wrong hands, even if it's not another nation. <laughs> Not mentioning any. Um, what if it got? What if that information got into the hands of, of criminals? What if they hacked into the wireless networks, and they could see when you weren't home, or when you were in one room and your children were in another? I don't know. There are all sorts of scenarios that I didn't, frankly, even want to um, to imagine. Where I think it might be quite handy for people not to have that information. That's another one. Um, people uh, trying to sell these smart meters and push them on you um, for cost savings. It has actually been shown in countries such as Canada and the US and so on that where these smart meters have been um, rolled out, that uh, bills have gone up. One, one to, to to absorb the cost of installing them, that's in the billions. Uh, Two, because um, you're not. They're designed. They're, they're being promoted to to save you the cost on bills by reducing your consumption, but only you taking proactive action on on changing your behaviours and 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 reducing your consumption is your consumption going to go down? Even if you were to do that. Your bills would still have to absorb the rollout of it, and um, and they could still go up. But you can still reduce your consumption. You can still be smart about it. You can still use your common sense on how long you shower, how many washes you put on, um, by uh, you know with well just common sense, but you know even a, a non wireless an analog um, meter. Um, the other argument for uh, having a smart meter uh, is that um, I'm running out of steam here um, is that it's more environmental you're going to reduce your consumption therefore it's better for the environment well the fact of the matter is we are destroying our environment with all these electromagnetic frequencies that we're bathing in um, they've been linked to, to uh, damage to plants, trees, animals, humans, um, because it's damaging us on a cellular level. Um, it's, it's destroying bees' navigation systems, so they can't find their way back to the hive, they're dying, and um, that affects the biodiversity of our environment, our crops on a day when we are being told we can't buy lettuce and broccoli alongside. Now, I don't know the main reasons for that, but, you know, biodiversity is affected. Um, there is a very good article, just to sum up, there is a very good article called Electrosmog Doctor, Not So Smart Meters, and um, I will post a link to that. Um, it's on... Uh, wddty.com and uh, it's very readable and it's uh, I think it's written by Guy Hudson I strongly recommend reading that um, if I just point out here the, the, the six reasons why um, to, to sum up why smart meters are being um, well, it's such a great idea. There are widely reported serious health problems with smart meters. I've touched on that. In the US and Canada, smart meters have caused numerous fires. You can Google that. It's shocking. Um, 
there are a variety of privacy issues, as I've discussed. Security problems also arise with smart meters. Um, yeah, so I've touched on that too. Bills increase in some cases by up to a thousand percent. They're not smart nor are they green, and there is no justifiable business scenario for them as they're currently designed to work. Um, uh, many residents developing typical electro, electro sensitivity symptoms um, the minute their new meters were installed, so look out for this if you have one. Uh, includes severe headaches, heart palpitations, brain fog, aches and pains, and many more. And immediate symptoms, these are the immediate symptoms, but long-term diseases, including cancer, have been associated with the unremitting pulsing radio frequency microwaves from smart meters. Just to give you an idea, if I can pull the information together. Um... In this letter of non-consent, if you go to smart, stopsmartmeters.org.uk, um, there is a letter of non-consent, which I thoroughly recommend, even if you are undecided and you want to exercise the precautionary principle, but you have utility companies circling and knocking on your door and phoning you up, um, I would... I would put that up at your door. I would send it to your your suppliers direct. I would copy it and pass it to your neighbours and have a conversation and see if they would like to do the same. In this letter of non-consent from stopsmartmeters.org.uk, it cites um, well, it's three pages worth of um, of of reasons why they are a really really bad idea, and that's with references to. Um, to the research into various things. Uh, for instance, um, 31st of May 2011, the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer categorised radio frequency EMFs as a possible carcinogen, the same as lead, DTT, chloroform and methylmercury. On 6th of May 2011, the Council of Europe issued a report titled Potential dangers of EMFs and their effect on the environment in which they called for an immediate reduction in exposure to EMFs by children. The Council advocates a precautionary principle be applied to wireless emissions to prevent a public health disaster akin to tobacco, leaded petrol and asbestos. Um, as demonstrated by Daniel Hirsch, Senior Nuclear Policy Lecturer at UCSC, smart meters can expose the body to wait for it. 160 to 800 times as much microwave radiation as mobile phones. If I refer back to this other article, I can find it. Mm. The studies of Dr. George Carlo, the epidemiologist who from 1993 to 1999 headed the first industry backed studies into the dangers of cell phone use. His findings show, among other adverse effects, interference with biological cellular signalling leading to disrupted DNA repair mechanisms, cell dysfunction and cell death. That isn't the bit that I was looking for, so bear with me. Here we go. One full day of cell phone radiation, one full day of cell phone radiation can cause as much DNA damage as 1,600 chest x-rays. And we're now living in an age where we don't, many of us don't even have a landline anymore. We are only using our mobile phone, and it's a smartphone on which we are getting our emails, our texts, surfing the web. I've been doing it. I haven't had a computer for over a year. I have been guilty of this too, and I've felt the physical effects in my body. And now that I've stopped, I'm not feeling them anymore. If I go back to doing anything on my mobile phone when I'm tempted, when I'm in a wireless range, um, I feel it immediately. One full day of cell phone radiation can cause as much DNA damage as 1,600 chest x-rays. Smart meters can expose the body to 160 to 800 times as much microwave radiation as mobile phones. And we're talking about smart meters that are communicating with every smart device in our home 
that are radiating into our home and outside of our home communicating to every other smart meter in the area and if I take my house as an example in London from where I've moved but I still have a flat there there are four flats in the building between four freeholders including the um, Thames Water as just one provider for the water we could have up to nine different smart meters on our one house and it's in a street full of Full of houses divided into flats and they're all communicating with each other there's no reason for them to be communicating with each other it's just how the mesh network is being set up for smart readers smart meters which is why i think um what i said earlier is referring to that this is not being a viable business model there's no reason for this i'm going to stop there um Um, well, perhaps I'll give you a couple more. In January 2011, the American Association of Environmental Medicine, so, you know, this environmental argument doesn't hold, um, has called for the complete removal of smart meters and a return to safe analogue due to scientific and medical studies repeatedly showing health risks from exposure to microwaves emitted from wireless devices. Let's be very clear here. No one's calling for a return to the dark ages because there's a lot of resistance. Okay, this is an incredibly um, liberating, fun, um, useful technology, isn't it? We, we would not have got as addicted as we are if there wasn't a benefit to us, the individual, to have this wireless technology in our home. Um, this is not a call for that. The the if you go if you go to the Dr. Klinghart interview, he he says that we had a really great uh, system for accessing all the benefits of the internet, fast, and that was fiber optics. All you've got to do is plug back in. Second worst offender after smart meters is the cordless telephone because it's emitting uh, the base the base of it is on all the time and that is emitting um, pulsed radiation. 24-7 if you've got it on all, all the time. Um, it's not rocket science to think, I haven't got any, I haven't got any phone mobile here. Um, it's not rocket science to think that if you've got a telephone and it's got to, and there's no wire going to a receiving station, you know, or a computer to the router or whatever, if there's no wire there somehow, the technology has got to communicate to something else, to another gadget. How is it going to do that? It's got to do it by waves. And it's these waves that we can't see, smell, taste, hear. You know, I'm beginning to pick up on it because what started me on this is this awful electrical, like high-pitched electro frequency ringing in my ears, which um, was pla is plaguing me. And that's what started me on this to try and work out what the hell this is because it's driving me nuts. All we've got to do is plug back in and have all the benefits of the internet. Um, it's just the wireless thing. Okay, in, uh, in March 2012, Dr. Andrew Goldsworthy's research warned that water smart meters via their strong radio frequency microwave emissions can severely reduce water quality, leading to increased toxicity of poisons present in the body. Bear in mind that if you re read anything about cellular biology, I strongly recommend Bruce Springston's The Biology of Belief, uh, Bruce Lipton's Biology of Belief. Um, which is also an incredibly easy read to understand something as complex as cellular biology. Um, then you'll understand that um, how the, the the cells are being are being killed and, and changed, um, and the DNA damaged by by this, uh, such that they will allow toxins in where previously they were healthy they might not. Um, this is com particularly concerning for areas like London where there are still lead pipes in use. Electromagnetically conditioned water flow can strip lead from pipes leading to an increase in toxin intake into the body and the food chain.
there are many things here. I strongly advise you to go to stopsmartmeters.org because frankly I could be in on here all day and it's not so interesting for me to just read things out. Um, I will attempt to post something underneath this if you have stuck with me for, for any of this. Thank you. Thank you. If if you're even vaguely curious about finding more, do go and watch the videos, click on the links, read the articles, do your own research. You know, I'm, I'm not wanting to foist something on somebody. I just felt called to show up even though I feel rubbish and, and, and I'm in a brain fog um, through, through illness that um, I perhaps can't form a terribly coherent argument today. But waking up to this more of this crap on television that is not giving you the full truth. Of course there are going to be benefits. There are going to be benefits to somebody, otherwise it, it wouldn't be doing it. But can I tell you those benefits are mostly for the energy companies and really not for the individuals. And anything they tell you that benefit is to you is pretty much just disguising what is actually a benefit to them. I mean, it's not... I would pay money. I would pay money rather than save money, if I thought it was saving me money, I would pay to not have a spark meter and to take my own meter readings, if that's what it took, so that they didn't have to send blokes round to knock on your door and take a meeting, meter, meter, meter reading. And I realise that some people can't be bothered. But it's a small price to pay, isn't it? All we've got to do is read our meters. We are then in charge, we know our consumption. How is it helpful to us to know, um, you know, when we boil our kettle that's their in it's their insight into our behavior and down the line when they have monitored that you know after coronation street everyone goes and puts on their kettle which they already know um they will be able to start charging more for the energy that you use at those peak times because i can totally see why the energy companies would want to be managing that peak supply and there is an argument, perhaps, that if they can manage that peak supply, maybe they don't have to produce quite so much energy because they are having to generate some energy and reserve it for those peak times. So, of course, there's an argument to, like, you know, spread it all out. But not at the cost. Not at the cost of our safety and our well-being. And there are thousands of scientific studies done to show the damage to our health, to the environment, particularly to our children and our unborn children. I feel so passionate about this. They're the ones who have no say in this, no voice. So somebody has to speak up for them. So at the risk of sounding like a complete loon, at the risk of not having the most eloquent speech and all the facts and figures to hand, I'm speaking up for them. To ask you, not to tell you to do anything, but to ask you to please go and do your own research. Go and find the information that is out there. Go and look at the research that's been done that the government and the big energy companies and the big tech companies don't want you to don't want you to know. They want to ignore because it doesn't serve their profits, their efficiencies, their profits. If they can get us hooked onto smart meters and all the smart devices that come with that, and this, I'm just learning about information of technology, is it? The Internet of, no, Internet of Things, IoT, Internet of Things, was a complete new thing to me until I read this article last week. Yeah, it's kind of catchy, isn't it, to be able to get rid of all our wires. I looked in an IKEA catalogue yesterday, and I see that there's a self-charging, wirelessly charging lamp. You know, where does this stop? Where does it stop? If we could actually see all of this, all of these frequencies around us, if we could understand that we are electromagnetic beings, that we need to function on a certain frequency, if, if our frequencies are being constantly disrupted by all the other frequencies, all this noise, this smart fog around us, we are not going to be very well for very long. And, and, and this has been shown in the countries where they have rolled these out. 
and in California apparently they are they are trying to get rid of the smart meters because they've they've woken up to it there. <clears throat> in the UK we still stand a chance of actually saying no. It is our prerogative to say no. We are not obliged to take these things as I understand it at this moment. The government would like to roll it out by 2020. That would help them see that they are meeting an environmental target or making an attempt to. When it actually comes down to the fact that people still don't change their behaviour, they'll end up just having to pay more. They won't be meeting the environmental target, they'll have ruined the environment in the process and they would have destroyed human health and plant life and animal life. and the health and well-being of generations to come, if you really want to delve deep, deep into this. It comes down to like those, those fertility issues, um, like current fertility issues in terms of if you're wanting to conceive now, really don't have a smart meter, turn your Wi-Fi off and get rid of your cordless telephone and plug an old-fashioned one back into the wall. Switch off your mobile when you don't need it, and certainly at night. I can't, cannot impress upon you what I have learnt is that it's the, it's the rest time. So not just when you're sleeping, when your children are sleeping. Think about your neighbours, even if you don't have children. Is your wireless technology reaching children or pregnant women in your area? If it is, please switch it off at night, at the very least. Thank you so much for listening. Go and do your own research and um, I really hope, I really hope this has helped in some way.